And good morning. The word of God for us to uh, consider this morning is found in the book of Exodus. We'll read there beginning at verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. And they were terrified, and they cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. This is God's word. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my guess is many of you here know the name Aaron Ralston. Show of hands. Okay, well, maybe not. (laughs) All right, let me fill you in. Aaron Ralston, and I think you'll remember his name once you hear about it. Aaron Ralston was a young man, and he was exploring a very remote slot canyon in southern Utah? Yes, okay. You know the story. So he's, cl- he's climbing down in this very narrow slot canyon, moving around, and all of a sudden, a big boulder shifts and pinned his arm in the slot canyon. Now, you maybe there was a, a movie made about it. I think it was called 147 Hours. Is that right? 140. But he also wrote a book, and I love the title of his book. It's called Between a Rock and a Hard Place. <laughs> At least he's got a a sense of humor, right? Now, we use that phrase, between a rock and a hard place, we use that to describe a situation where none of your options to get out of a difficult situation, none of the options seem very good. And that perfectly described Aaron Ralston. He tried, with all of his might and using different techniques, he tried to shift the boulder off his arm. It's too big. It was wedged in too tightly, so that wasn't an option that was going to work. He hadn't told anybody where he was going. He hadn't told anybody what he was doing, and he was in an incredibly remote area. So waiting for somebody to come and rescue him, that wasn't a good option. So instead, if you know the story, you know that he chose the really, 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 really bad option number three, He reached into his backpack, pulled out a dull pocket knife, and he cut off his arm to get out from behind that boulder. I just, you know, I, I'm sure if I'd been in a situation that wouldn't even have come on my radar screen as, as a possible option. But that's how life is sometimes, right? On our journey through life, Sometimes there are obstacles in our way and it seems like none of the options that we have to try to get past that obstacle, none of the options seem very good or seem very appealing. So now today, first day of a new year, a lot of people make resolutions, right? Even if you don't make resolutions, my guess is you have some vague idea of where you'd like to go this coming year, right? Maybe you want to go on a journey of self-improvement, right? Become a better version of yourself. Maybe you want to go on a journey where you uh, improve your health, right? Want to live a, a healthier lifestyle. Maybe you want to have healthier relationships with the people in your life. Maybe your goal for this coming year, this journey, as we walk through 2023, maybe you want uh, healthier finances, maybe better living arrangements. Whatever it is, my guess is we all have some idea of where we'd like to go, take some journey through this coming year, and it's almost guaranteed, right? It's almost guaranteed that we are going to face some obstacles, some roadblocks, some challenges. And the question is, how are we going to get past those obstacles and challenges? 
I'd like to suggest that we take a look at the people of Israel and how they dealt with the situation they found themselves, in which they found themselves. And our encouragement today is that as we walk through 2023, as we begin this journey through this new year, that we strive to move on with God and with confidence. So in order to have that make sense, it probably helps to have a little background information. So if you don't know the story, the people of Israel, uh, and at the time there was a widespread famine, they found refuge by going to Egypt. Egypt had food to share, and so they, they went to Egypt to find some refuge. And then they decided to stay there. But after the famine was over, situations changed. Leadership changed, and what had originally become a, a, a place of refuge ultimately became a prison for the people of Israel. They became slaves in Egypt, and they became slaves for quite a long time. And as you can imagine with slaves, it wasn't pleasant. They suffered at the hands of their Egyptian masters, and so they cried out to God to save them. And here's what we're told. God said to Moses... I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of the, their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So God sent Moses. He said, Moses, I want you to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Right there, that's, that's a tough ask for Moses. That's what Moses thought. He said, you know what, there's, there's no way. Pharaoh is, is like the most powerful ruler in the world. And the Egyptians, they, they really relied on slave labor. He said, there's no way he's going to listen to me. I, this, that's an impossible task. God said, move on. <laughs> A little encouragement. God sent Moses down to Egypt. And Moses said to Pharaoh, God says you should let the people go. Pharaoh said, no. Who are you? And who is this God you're talking about? No way. I'm not going to do that. Get out of my presence. It's then that God, through a whole series, and, and maybe you know this story, but through a whole series of plagues, God, the, these really terrifying displays of his power, God convinced Pharaoh that, yes, indeed, it would be wise for him to let the people go. And so he did. And the people were excited, right? And you can imagine, 400 some years of slavery. Finally, their prayers are answered. God, through his power, freed them from slavery. And so they were probably dancing in the streets. And they, they were willing to follow Moses. They were willing to follow God. We're anywhere. And God says, I'm going to take you to a promised land, a rich land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they said, yes, we're all in on that. Let's go. And so they marched out into the desert. But then things went bad real quick, right? Because Pharaoh said, oh, wait, that, that, was, that, was, that was a big mistake. I, I should never have done that. He said to his advisors, what have we done? We've let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and he took his army with him and they overtook them, that is the people of Israel, overtook them as they camped by the sea. And so this is where the Israelites suddenly found themselves, figuratively speaking, trapped between a rock in a hard place. On the one side is the Red Sea. No way to get across that. On the other side is probably the most powerful military in the world at that time, ready to take them either back as slaves or to kill them. The people of Israel looked at these obstacles on the way to the Promised Land and they said, well, this is clearly impossible. There's no way. There's no way we're going to get across the Red Sea. There's no way we're going to get past Pharaoh's army. We are going to die here in the desert. And then, of course, they did what often happens. They started complaining. You should never have brought us out here, Moses. God, what were you thinking? It would have been better that we just stay back there in Egypt as slaves. Now we're going to die out here in the desert. Oh, woe is us. Uh, complain, whine, groan, all that sort of thing. Well, you can see their point, right? <laughs> From their perspective, it did look impossible. And it's easy to criticize 
you know, I, I like to do this. It's easy to criticize the Israelites. They're so fickle and, and you know, a little revisionist history going on there. See, it's easy to criticize them, but let's make it relevant to us today. I mean, think about it. What do we do? What do we do when God leads us on our path through life and suddenly there are these big roadblocks and obstacles that we find in our way? What do we do? Let me give you an example. At one point in his ministry, Jesus went up on a hillside and he preached what we know today as the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus repeatedly said in this sermon to his followers, people who were going to be his disciples, he said, you've heard it said, but I tell you. And what Jesus was doing there is he said, you've grown up believing that this is the way to act. You've grown up thinking this way and acting this way. But now I am going to challenge you to adopt a new way of thinking. I'm going to challenge you to live a totally new and different life with a completely different outlook. And it's going to be hard. He said, you've heard it said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. Right? I mean, that makes sense, right? You're, you're nice to people who are nice to you and, and you're mean to people who are mean to you. That, that makes perfect sense. Jesus said, you've heard it said, you've grown up thinking and believing that this is the way to act. Love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But I tell you, here's the challenge. I tell you, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. And if that wasn't hard enough, and he said, and if somebody strikes you on the cheek, Turn the other side. Let him hit you over here too. Really? I mean, really? I mean, okay, maybe in here as we, you know, kind of as a philosophical exercise, maybe we could sort of think about doing that. But out in the real world, love people who hate you, who actively seek your harm. Somebody comes up and smacks you in the face. Really? We're going to go, okay, have at it. That seems like an impossible ask, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, we're all good and let's follow you, Jesus, wherever you lead us, except you want us to go there? Even if we wanted to do that, I'm, I'm not sure, I'll, I'll speak for myself. Even if I wanted to do that, which probably I wouldn't in the real world, I don't know that I could do that without lashing out, without striking out, without getting angry and defensive, right? And so it's understandable then that we might possibly do the same thing that those Israelites did. Faced with those seemingly impossible path forward, we might want to kind of cling to the old ways of thinking and the old ways of doing things. That makes a little more sense to us, right? So how do we get past those kinds of obstacles? And that's just one, that's just one example, right? God asks us as his followers, as his disciples, as we walk with Jesus through this coming year, he says, yeah, I want you to give up those old sins and I want you to not think about yourself and think about others. Think of all the examples. Think of all the things that God asks us to do as we follow him. And how many of those seem difficult because of our own weaknesses, because of our own failings, right? And then sometimes because of circumstances in which we find ourselves, the, the world in which we live, the people that we come into contact with, yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. It would be very natural to want to cling to those old ways of doing things and those old ways of thinking. So how do we overcome our own reluctance, our, our own failings, and how do we get past these obstacles that we see in our path? Well, see, that's where this story gets really interesting, right? The Israelites could not dream of how they were going to get out of their predicament, right? Couldn't cross the Red Sea, couldn't get past Pharaoh's army. It seemed impossible. They couldn't dream of doing it. You ever hear the saying, if you can't dream it, you can't do it? The people of Israel couldn't dream of how they were going to get past these obstacles to get to the promised land. Their vision of the future was limited by their own limitations. They said, we, we don't 
have the ability. We don't have the resources. We can't do it. How can we move on? But that was the key. It wasn't up to them, was it? They didn't have to overcome Pharaoh's army with their own resources. They didn't have to figure out their own way across the Red Sea. The Lord said to Moses, why are the people crying out to me? Tell them to move on. See, and what did, what, did, what did Moses say to the people? He says, don't be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you'll never see them again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. They didn't have to figure out a way past Pharaoh's army. They didn't have to figure out a way across the Red Sea. God was going to do it for them. They just needed to do what? To trust Him. To have faith in His power. And so the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. And the waters were divided. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and on their left. And after all the people had gotten safe to safety, then God allowed Pharaoh's army to come chasing after him. And what happened? The waters returned. Pharaoh and his army were never to be seen again. What seemed impossible was made possible by God with his power. See, God had a plan for his people. And God, through his power, made it possible for the people to move on. Now, it strikes me that perhaps, just maybe, there might be a lesson for us in this today, right? Jesus said, I want you to follow me through life. And it's not going to be an easy path. It's going to be difficult, sometimes because of our own weaknesses and our own failures and our own failings because of the world in which we find ourselves, it's not going to be easy. In fact, Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. So it's almost guaranteed that as we walk with Jesus through life, through this coming year, that we're going to find ourselves sometimes between a rock and a hard place. We're going to find ourselves with some seemingly impossible problem or obstacle. In whatever area of life that we're, we're, we're traveling through, whether it's through personal improvement, whether it's relationships, whether it's work, whatever, we're going to find ourselves in difficult situations. And then it's good that we remember this story, right? You see, God had a plan for his people. And that plan did not involve them staying as slaves in Egypt, and it didn't involve them dying in the desert. God's plan was that they would go to that promised land so that when, this is going to sound familiar, so that when the time had fully come, God would send forth his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law. God had a plan for his people, and through his power, he made it possible for them to move on to fulfill his plan. Guess what? God's got a plan for us. God's got a plan for you. God wants us to come to know Jesus as his Savior, to have faith in Jesus as our Savior. Now, that seems like an impossible ask for us, right? How are we going to do that? God's power is on display through baptism. He makes us children of God. Through God's Word, creates faith in our hearts. Through His Holy Spirit, God does what's impossible through His power. And then God says, as you walk through life, I've got a plan for you. And through the the baptismal promise, and through His Word, and, and through the, the fellowship of brothers and sisters in Christ, the support and the encouragement that we get here in church on Sunday morning, God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the strength that you need to say no to sin, to, to discard those, those dangerous and the destructive behaviors. Through God's power, He frees us from our slavery to sin and, and, and sin's power over us so that we can actually think about doing something that would seem impossible to us. We can go from living a life of selfishness and self-absorption to 
to living a life of selflessness and service to God and, and to others. It's guaranteed that we're going to run into challenges and difficulties. We're going to find ourselves stuck between a rock and a hard place where none of the options seem good. And it's at those times we have to say to ourselves, oh yeah, maybe I don't have to come up with all the solutions. I don't have to have the, the, the power and the strength within myself. I don't have to figure it out myself. Maybe, maybe I should trust God. Maybe I should trust His power and His plan. So as we contemplate our journey through the year 2023, I think maybe we could do well to remember this story of the Israelites and their impossible situation and how God allowed them to pass through the Red Sea on the way to the Promised Land. And maybe we'd also do well to keep in mind the words of Paul. He said once, you know, by myself, I can't do anything. But he also said, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. With that confidence and that trust in God's power, that through his power, we can do all things. Let's move on into the year 2023 with God and with confidence. Amen.